Ever since I first laid eyes on Octopath Traveler, Live Alive and the like, I've been wanting to make a 2.5D JRPG in Unreal Engine. And over the last 6 months, that's exactly what I've been doing. In past projects, I was able to put together a similar art style and programmed a top-down character controller. But this time around, I took things way further and also made a full-fledged turn-based combat system, drew an insane amount of pixel art, made custom Niagara effects and many other things you'd need for a proper JRPG. In this devlog, I'm gonna walk you through the process of creating these systems, the resources I used to figure all of this out and much more. But first of all, I have many plans for this JRPG project and the systems I created for it. Maybe make some small fan game showcases in an HD 2D inspired style. Maybe make some short games to develop my character design and storytelling skills. But the first stage will be to teach you how to create this exact JRPG step by step in my first premium Unreal Engine course. I'm still in the process of breaking everything down into easily digestible steps since these systems do get quite complicated. And I'll also still have to record and edit the videos, but I'm hoping to release the course sometime in December this year. So if you want to get notified when it launches with a big discount code, make sure to sign up for the waitlist from the link in the description. And this will also give you instant access to my Unreal top down template which the field sections of this JRPG are based on. Now let's get back to how I made this game. The biggest part would of course be the battle system and for that reason it's the first thing I wanted to figure out. Now I've made many games before that feature combat but usually it would be real time combat involving either projectiles or melee attacks and this is actually my first stab at making something that is turn based. But I already had a hunch that it would mostly just come down to handling a race with character data and keeping track of the turn order and targetable units. To be able to first set up the systems before worrying about drawing pixel art, I started out by using this awesome character asset by Neurosite and enemies by Akoro as placeholders. I decided to connect everything related to the battle to a battle manager blueprint which has a camera and 4 spawn positions for every team, which closely resembles how battle scenes are set up in Octopath Traveler 2. In here I would have to then decide the turn order, which characters become active when and who is targeting who. The active character would then be moved to the attack position using a timeline and this is actually quite similar to what I did in my prototype remaking Kirby's Quick Draw minigame, so it was quite simple to set up. But next I had to show the action menu where I allow the player to pick between attacking, using a skill, item and so on. And this is where I started to fall down the unreal UI rabbit hole which took me about 3 weeks to crawl back out of. And without getting too deep into it, because I could rant about this for an hour, keyboard and gamepad controls for UI are completely broken in Unreal by default. And you'll need to use many hacky solutions or a plugin to support mouse, keyboard and gamepad all at once. Common UI, which was developed for Fortnite and then opened up to all developers, has some amazing features and got me about 90% there. But it has a steep learning curve, is still quite experimental and keyboard controls are highly neglected and don't even work properly in the official samples such as Lyra. UI Navigation 3.0, which is open source but also available for free on Fab, turned out to be much easier to use. And seamlessly switching between mouse, keyboard and gamepad controls worked perfectly right out of the box. After crawling out of that rabbit hole, I finally could continue working on the battle system and next took care of playing the attack animations for both the party members and enemies. This character did come with a cool slash animation I could easily just trigger with Paper ZD and since I want to keep the enemy creation costs low, I just made them hop up and down using a timeline allowing me to just play the same animation on a static sprite for all enemies. And after also adding in a little bit of sprite shake on receiving damage, this already looked pretty decent. Since the turn based battles start to come together nicely, this is the point where I start to gather references and draw pixel art from my cast of characters. I wanted to have a very typical sword fighter as the main character, which ended up being heavily influenced by Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII, which I was playing at the time, and Gran from Grand Blue Fantasy. For the second character I needed a healer and since I always had a thing for paladins in WoW, I gathered some references and started to just randomly put together golden, black and red armor pieces. And somehow ended up with this character that actually reminds me more of High Inquisitor White Main rather than any paladin I know. Since I also wanted to show off how to use cool particle effects in the course, I needed a spell caster as well and decided on drawing a mage for the third character. Since I also love vanillaware games, my mind instantly went to Dragon Crown Sorceress and Velvet from Odin Sphere as my main reference for the direction I wanted to take. And that was supposed to be it. Even though most RPGs feature 4 characters in your party, I simply didn't have the time and resources to draw a fourth one. Until I was basically done prototyping the course and drew a Dwarven Ranger as well, but he won't show up until much later. While drawing all of these sprites day by day, I also kept on adding more things to the battle system before implementing the new art. This includes things such as making the turn order visible on the top of the screen through a bunch of UI widgets, adding floating damage numbers to characters, one simple Niagara particle effect, and there was still one thing missing that every gamer loves. 
chromatic aberration. Oh yes, this beautiful effect that mimics a camera's lens distortion and doesn't make the image look all kinds of blurry and messed up at all. But joking aside, when used sparingly just for a moment, it can make attacks feel a bit more punchy in a similar way that screen shake would. And this is something I figured out by recording footage of Octopath 2 and looking at it frame by frame. For the actual battle logic, I don't really know what to say here since as long as you understand how arrays work and how to apply damage, it's really not all that hard. The hardest thing about this turn-based system are timing things correctly, communicating between different blueprints and managing UI elements. And at that point I slowly started adding in the new art for the party members and also a couple of enemies that didn't look all that great at first. I was able to draw a slime that I'm pretty happy with, but the wolf and bear just looked way too friendly and I just couldn't get them to look right. So I actually had to commission my friend to redraw these for me and they looked so much better. But around that time I hit another big roadblock, which was Niagara particle effects. As you may know, I'm mostly a programmer and only learned how to draw pixel art over the last few years. But particle effects are something I didn't have much experience with outside of just tweaking things such as the color and duration. Especially since the old Cascade particle system got phased out and Niagara became the new standard, I've been completely out of the loop. For that reason I had to learn how to make particle effects by myself so I can bundle some of the more advanced ones with the course, but also teach at least how to create simple ones and how to make adjustments to existing particle systems. This took me on another side quest, going through a lot of documentation and many tutorials, with the Niagara playlist by Prismatica Dev being by far the best resource in my opinion. After a few days of practice, I was able to slowly stray away from what tutorials taught and became able to create simple effects on my own. I made a cleave attack for the warrior, a heal for the paladin, and a fire pillar for the mage, making this look like a legit JRPG at this point. But the hardship wasn't over yet. One of the last things I needed in terms of art was an environment for the field sections and battle map. In other projects I'd use some of the environments in the permanently free collection from Fab, but there really wasn't anything I liked fitting the medieval theme. So as a starting point I used multiple asset packs by Quaternius which fit the setting and were free under a CC0 license. But they didn't come with a pre-built example map, so I had to spend some time putting something together by myself that looked at least halfway decent. For the assets by Quaternius I could just lower the max texture size and change the texture filter setting to nearest to make them look a bit more pixelated. But for the ground textures and pixel grass I couldn't really find any fitting assets so I had to figure out how to draw these by myself. And while they don't look amazing I think they're good enough for my first attempt. With the asset situation sorted out and battle being more or less complete I could then go back to working on mechanics related to the field phase. This meant finally making the other party members follow you around the map which again elevated the project to the next level. There's many ways you could go about this and last time I simply used a nav mesh and used the AI move to because of how convenient it was to set up, but usually that's not the way it works in JRPGs. This time around I decided to create an actor component I called movement history where the player would record the location and rotation every frame it moved. And followers would then be able to look into that array and depending on their member ID pick a certain entry in the array to move towards. The first follower would be 15 entries behind, the next one 30 entries behind and so on. Another thing that's a staple in JRPGs is of course the ability to pick up different types of potions and consumables and use them during battle. And again this is another system where a solid understanding of arrays and structs will do 90% of the work for you. But the only thing I implemented here were different types of health potions since implementing a revive potion would require a huge addition to the targeting system to allow targeting of already defeated party members. And since this project was already getting way too big I didn't want to add too many unnecessary things at that point. But somehow that still didn't prevent me from making a full fledged safe system with multiple safe slots showing your party data. And wrapping everything up by making a functional main menu with a 3D background scene. So after 6 months of working on this I was quite happy with the result and feel like this is gonna be my best work yet. In terms of programming there weren't many new things for me to learn outside of UI navigation, but knowing that I'll turn this into a course forced me to always use best practices and try out many different methods to find the best one instead of just going with the easiest thing or hacky solutions. This is also the reason it took me so long to make this since I had to write down every little step and have an explanation for each of the thousands of micro decisions I made throughout this project. At this point I think just making a game without having to worry about teaching others how to follow along step by step will feel like Goku taking off the ankle weights and I could have probably made this in about a month or two. But now I still have a lot of work left to do, streamlining the steps, creating more visualizations and actually recording and editing the videos and will hopefully be able to wrap it up sometime in December this year. So again if you're interested in learning how to make a JRPG like this by yourself, make sure to sign up for the waitlist from the link in the description. 
Once the course launches, you'll get notified with a discount code and you'll also get my top-down template to play around with right away. As always, a huge thanks to my awesome patrons and YouTube members.